Well, how's it going? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today, we are going to talk about the difference between a P90 pickup and a Jazzmaster pickup. There is a difference, and people on the internets call them interchangeably all the time. Well, I, they call everything P90s. So we're going to get to the bottom of that, what the difference is, why they're nothing alike, not even close, not even in the same sentence. Uh, so, we're back at night. This is on purpose this time because... Everybody that watched that last video liked it so much. We'll put the gray thing up to it. Uh, we got another drink of the night tonight. So we got a... Uh, tonight I'm, I'm drinking a Talisker Scotch, which is probably my favorite. Um, if I was going to drink just basically anything, like, hey, I'm going to have a drink tonight real quick, it's probably going to be a Scotch. And if I have a choice, it's going to be Talisker. I really like... I really like the peaty, smoky kind of flavor of a Talisker. That's kind of my thing. Okay, so let's talk about P90s first because they came along first in the history. Uh, they're a big single coil pickup, late 40s, um, 48, 49, probably you'll find some. And back at that point, actually, they didn't have adjustable pull pieces. They were just a regular single coil pickup with magnetic pull pieces. But then right around, I want to say, 51 uh, right in that area you can look this up and I might be a couple years off I had a 52 ES125 and it already had uh, adjustable pull pieces but back in those days most of them were all dog ears so they couldn't adjust the pickup up and down so they used screws to do that okay and that's where the screw adjustable screw pull pieces on a P90 came from because what we have here is a quarter of an inch tall single coil that's real wide and real long remember there was no humbuckers then they weren't even invented yet okay and so you have uh, just this big single coil like i said they needed to be adjustable so we have tons of parts here that make up a p90 so it had a retainer piece much like a humbucker that would go on the bottom right here and there would be screws that would go through the bobbin. So we won't totally reassemble this whole thing right here, but this will just give you an idea. So these screws, they actually thread in here, 540 thread, I think. So those screws would, six of those would thread in there through this retainer piece that goes on the bottom right here. Okay. And then on either side of this would be a magnet. And so you would have two big bar magnets like that and that screw pole piece in the middle. That is how, and then this base plate would go on the bottom. This cover would go on the top and you have your whole P90. 10,000 winds of 42 gauge plain enamel wire would go on here, which is a lot of wire. If you Quarter of an inch tall, 10,000 winds, tons of wire. High output. Uh, a vintage spec one is going to be about 8.2 to 8.4K. And when they invented the PAF, they will, they said, well, let's just take 10,000 winds, divide it by two, put 5,000 on each one, make them out of phase with each other. Boom, you have a humbucker. And humbuckers actually, because of the way humbucking works, this is a whole different video, but the way humbucking works makes it to where they're actually not as hot as a P90. Everybody thinks that humbuckers are hotter than P90s, but they're not. This is probably the gnarliest, coolest pickup, in my opinion, ever made. And of all the pickups that we make here at Dylan Talks Tone, these are the only ones that I brag about um, because we make the best P90s there are. Okay, so there it is, that's a P90. Two magnets, retainer in the middle, screws through the top, base plate, boom. And as you can see, it's basically a single coil, made like a single coil humbucker, all the pieces are the same, you just have one coil instead of two. So it's not hum canceling, but a big, fat, 10,000 wind, quarter inch tall, big single coil with tons of magnet. The tons of magnet is one of the main differences between this and a Jazzmaster pickup. People 
will constantly say, I want, I love Jazzmaster P90s. Jazzmaster P90s are not P90s. They are not the same because we have to switch over to Fender now, 1958-ish. The Jazzmaster comes out to be a jazz guitar. He took a pickup, Fender took a pickup that was 9 16 wide and said, well, I tell you what, in order to get better low end response, we're gonna make the pickup much wider. So that's what he did. So he made this pickup very, very wide. But look at this, very, very, very skinny. This is only an eighth of an inch or a little more between these two uh, plates. So you're looking at a pickup that's literally just about an eighth of an inch tall in coil. Widening out that coil this way and making it very, very short gives it much better low end response. Then you put the bass circuit in a Jazzmaster and you have a jazz guitar. A lot of people want to know why they may have one meg pots because they want to retain more high end in that setup. So they put one meg pots in them uh, to kind of give it a little more sparkle on the top end. Otherwise it would be super muddy with 250s and a normal single coil. But that's it. Completely different design ethos. This was just a big single coil. This is what they knew in 1949, 50, 51, 52. This was 1958 and you have to remember that by 1958, there had only been humbuckers for one year. Fender didn't have a humbucker for a long time after this. So in order for him to get good low-end response and nice fat tone, he had to make the pickup short and fat. So a Jazzmaster single coil. And you notice it doesn't have screws. It has, um, they're about a half inch tall instead of, you know, really tall magnets so the magnets are weaker better low end response uh the bobbin is wider it is flatter and what's crazy is the output volume wise of this pickup is pretty much the same as a strat pickup but you're going to look at eight and a half k 8.2 k or something on a Jazzmaster pickup and only about 5.9 k on a strat pickup this is an excellent example, not to get off on another tangent, but this is an excellent example of why you can't go by the ohms reading of a pickup to understand the output of it. Because the frequency response of a Strat pickup and a Jazzmaster pickup are completely different. The output is about the same, but the resistance is different. So this is a perfect example of why you just can't read the number and say, well, 7.2K is not high enough output. 5.9K is not high enough output. You can't just go by that number. You have to understand what the design ethos of the pickup is, understand how it's gonna work in your guitar and have that conversation. This is one of the reasons why when we build pickups for people, customers, we like to have a conversation. Somebody will get on my website and say, Hey, I just want the hottest pickup you have. Do you really? Do you really want the hottest pickup I have? Chances are they don't. Chances are they want something louder that cuts through the mix better, but that doesn't mean hotter. And that is why thinking about the difference between a pickup like this and a pickup like this is important because you would use these for two completely different things in two completely different applications. They're completely different constructions. They don't sound the same. And there you go. If you have any questions about anything like this, let me know. Uh, what should we do next? Humbuckers, mini humbuckers? Um, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. You know, uh, this has been really fun. This whole series of videos. Well, there goes the dogs. I tell you what. Let me uh, grab some questions from a couple of videos. A couple of questions that have come up in the last couple days on some of our videos. Ron Light says, I'm more of a style over content kind of guy. No, not really. So I'll just say that the ambience, lighting, and the whiskey are a huge step forward in presentation. It's scotch tonight. Thank you so much. I agree. Dance Sucker 70 I like that name, says, I have a question. The FU Tremolo Company has this thing called the PMS Pickup Mounting System. It's a brass block that screws into the body of your guitar and you mount the pickup onto the block to get more sustain. What are your thoughts on it? 
Uh, the sustain thing is kind of a debate. However, I will say that pretty much everything that Adam does at FU Tone is amazing. He's a cool dude. Um, I met him a few years ago at NAMM and try to keep in contact with him quite regularly. He's, he's an awesome dude and his stuff is super, super high quality. If you have a Floyd style guitar, um, make sure you check out uh, FU Tone. They, their stuff is top, top, top shelf. Cool stuff. KJ Radio. To your discussion on string or bridge grounding, why is the industry never adopted, like Taylor guitars, the addition of a ground fuse so that you do not become the shortest path to ground? Faulty wiring in clubs, old gear, a mic, sweaty hands, all can spell disaster for a musician. Some have died due to this. As I've researched this in guitar design it, books, it just seems logical. It's like a home without earth grounding back during the knob and tube days and polarized outlets. Um, so what he's referring to here is if you snip the ground lug off of your amp and you play in a club that is not grounded very well and you hold a guitar across your chest, it's possible um, that you could, if the right circumstances are present, uh, you could be electrocuted uh, across your guitar. But here's what I will say. Don't do that go to the trouble of making sure that your equipment is grounded correctly and if it is not talk to the venue and don't play there it's a safety hazard you could die and your amp your modeler all of your equipment is designed this is 2020 right like next two weeks from now or however whenever it's we're in the 21st century um there's no excuse for it and if you the, to me, this is take you taking responsibility on yourself to make sure that you are safe in the venue that you're playing in. And it also says to me, uh, make sure that you don't take shortcuts with your equipment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess you could put a fuse on a ground, string ground, but that's a band-aid on a bigger problem. And that safety is, I mean, safety third, you know, I mean, really. Safety third. Thanks for hanging out. This has been super fun. Let me know what else you want me to make at night while I have a drink with you and talk about guitar stuff. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, yeah. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the little bell. Share this with all your friends. All that stuff. Because while it is not my real job, it's really fun. So I would like to do it more. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you next time.